If you've ever tried embroidering textured fabrics, you may have run into some issues getting your design to appear nicely on your fabric. So in this episode, I'm going to share five tips for you to employ while you're embroidering on your textured fabric so that you can make sure that your design comes out really nice, crisp, and clean. So before we get started, I just want to remind you guys that if you have any questions at all throughout the video, to leave a comment below and we'll get back to you with an answer. And I also wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed to our channel so far. If you're new here, welcome. If you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and click subscribe and don't forget to click on the little bell icon because that will notify you every time we post a new video. So without further ado, let's get started. So for those of you who are not sure what I mean when I say textured fabrics, what I mean by that is fabrics that literally have texture to it when you touch them, or fabrics that have holes or any naps in the fabrics, any ribs, um, that would be your textured fabrics. So we're talking about uh, towels, um, could be knits, like sweater knits, um, could be fleece, could be a corduroy that has those really deep ribs, which is like those narrow kind of little openings. Um, so really anything that has texture to it would be considered a textured fabric. And now the tips I'm gonna share with you might depend on the type of texture um, that you're working with, but for the most part, these uh, will apply to all. So let's go ahead and get started. So tip number one is to cover all your bases. And what I mean by that is to make sure that you are using the correct materials to begin with. So with most textured fabrics, you're going to be using your 7511 sharp point needle. And that is your standard embroidery needle that you will be using with most embroidering projects. And you will also use cutaway backing, which is again, um, the most universal and the strongest type of backing. You can also use tearaway, really depending on the stretch of the garment, which I'll get into in just a minute. So for some instances, you're not gonna wanna use cutaway because perhaps you don't want your backing showing through for whatever reason. So if that's the case, you can use your tearaway, but you're gonna have to keep some things in mind. Number one is that your design cannot be that heavy um, when it comes to stitch count. So you can't have like a really um, intricate or high stitch count design because you have to remember that this will be washed. If you're gonna wash this item frequently, then the stitches need to have a foundation to hold on to, which is why cutaway is the best option for your stabilizer. So if you are gonna use a tearaway that's going to, if you are gonna use a tearaway stabilizer and it's gonna be washed frequently, um, make sure that it's a simple low stitch count design that doesn't need um, that much foundation to hold on to. Um, but for the most part, you should use a cutaway. For instance, right here on this really stretchy textured fabric, I use cutaway backing and adhesive spray, which is what I recommend when you have that really stretchy uh, textured fabrics, such as knits, which this is a knit. Um, but then when you have this type of textured fabric, which is just, as you can see, the stretch is very minimal, you can go ahead and use tearaway and you won't have any bad problems. So right here we use tearaway and there was no problems because it's a very simple design and it's also very low stretch. I also mentioned earlier that you should use your sharp point needle for most textured embroidery projects. However, you should look at the stretch of the fabric in order to determine whether you're going to use a sharp or bob point. Now, most of the time you're going to be using your sharp points, but there's some instances where you might want to use a bob point, and that is mostly going to be for your thin, um, stretchy knits. So here, for example, this, it is stretchy because it's a towel, but it's not too stretchy. The, the stretch is not, it's pretty minimal. So um, I use an 8012 sharp needle. And the reason why I use 8012, of course, is because I was using a thicker metallic thread. So I needed a larger needle to get in there, but I was able to get in with my sharp point just fine. But here, for instance, you might want to test it out on materials like this because this is a lot stretchier and a lot more delicate. However, I did use a 7511 sharp point needle for this project. I didn't want to clarify that I used sharp point on this knit, but that's because it was a thicker knit. So I felt comfortable enough to be able to use my 7511 sharp. However, if it was a little bit thinner, I would definitely go with a ball point needle. Tip number two kind of goes hand in hand with tip number one, and that is to use your water soluble stabilizer as a topping. And what I mean by topping is that it's just going to go on the top of your embroidery. So you will hoop your embroidery as, um, as usual. You would put your backing under your fabric and then you would place a sheet of water soluble stabilizer on top. And what that's going to do is that's going to help prevent the stitches from sinking into the fabric. 
so it's gonna make it pop out more. So you're definitely gonna wanna use this because the fabric is so textured that sometimes the stitches, especially if they're details, they might get lost in the fabric. So in order to prevent that, you wanna use your topping. Now, when it comes to topping, you can either hoop it all together with your fabric or you can kind of just float it on top. And what I mean by floating is that you're just going to place it on top. And then um, once the machine starts stitching, it'll stitch it enough so that it kind of holds on by itself without, you know, while it stitches. So I would recommend actually hooping it. You don't have to all the time. It depends on your design. But if you have a, a heavier design, um, I mean a heavier, like a higher stitch count design, or more details going on, then I would recommend hooping it with, with it on because if you float it on top, you run the risk of it kind of bunching up. Um, so that's just one of the mistakes that you want to avoid. So you can try both ways and see what works for you, but I recommend just hooping it together. Tip number three has to do with the design choice. And typically when you're embroidering on textured fabrics, you wanna avoid light open designs with the exception of a few, which I will explain later. But mostly you wanna have designs that have uh, solid fills. And um, you also wanna get designs like these that consist of satin stitches because those light uh, little running stitches are just not gonna show up well on your fabric. So this right here is a good example of a design that would look really well on textured fabrics such as towels. This would come out and appear very nicely because as you can see, it has the satin stitches I talked about and it has uh, fills, not too many open areas. So this will look really nice on a textured um, fabric. Now this, for example, would probably not come out as good. A design like this that has a lot of open areas and uh, very thin stitches, that's gonna get lost in your fabric. So you might want to consider um, embroidering designs more like this if you're going to work with a type of fabric. So tip number four kind of contradicts with tip number three a little bit because I did mention not to go with designs that are open. But what I mean by open is that you don't want uh, too many little open spaces and very thin stitches. Instead, uh, if you want to go with an open design, then you should use a technique called embossing. And what that is really is it's kind of like an applique where the, your fabric is going to be kind of the center of attention, except you're not gonna use your applique fabric, you're gonna use your own fabric, your textured fabric. Um, so for instance, uh, you would want the, the uh, design to be like a satin border, and then the open areas of the design will be filled in with your textured fabric. So it comes out to be really nice. You can do um, emboss like monograms on a towel and that turns out to be really nice. And typically when you do the embossing technique, you uh, use the same color thread as your fabric or like a variation of that color to make it pop out. Um, and you get a really nice kind of effect on your textured fabric where you're kind of using the texture to your advantage. So the embossing tip on its own is a whole separate topic. So if you guys want, I can make a video on it for you guys so you can see how it's done. It's actually quite easy, but it's a really nice effect. So it's something that you want to keep in mind when you have to embroider on these textured fabrics. And now tip number five is to create a knockdown stitch. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, that's actually just a stitch that's gonna act as a foundation for the rest of your embroidery. And really all it is is that it's just going to be a stitch in the same color as the fabric that you're embroidering on. Now the key is that's the exact same fabric, um, the same color as the fabric, so that it um, isn't too obvious. But so what that, that's going to do is that it's just going to knock down the rest of your texture and then it's going to provide a clean flat surface for your stitches to embroider on and um, you'll be able to see all of the designs, all of the um, details in your designs when you embroider it with that knockdown stitch on the bottom. So it won't limit you. The good thing is that it won't limit you to what type of designs you can use. So there you have it. These are our five tips for embroidering on textured fabrics. If you do wanna see um, any single one of these tips in depth, you wanna see how it's done, go ahead and leave a comment below and let us know what tip you wanna see. We can do the knockdown uh, stitch, we can do the embossing, really anything that you wanna see. We, If enough people comment on it, uh, then we will make a video for you guys separately on that topic. So with that being said, I wanna thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button below and to subscribe to our channel. And I also wanted to take the time to invite you guys to our Facebook group 
Embroidery and Custom Apparel Mastery, where you can chat with me and thousands of other embroiderers and apparel decorators in the space. You can go in there and ask us any questions you have or share any tips. And be sure to tell us that you are from YouTube because we love seeing our YouTube viewers uh, going over to our Facebook group and engaging with us. So. Um, don't forget that the link is in the description below. And I also wanted to encourage you guys to sign up for our newsletter. You will get tips delivered to your inbox. So with that being said, remember all the links are in the description below. Again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.